In Neuzelle, beer is part of the city's history. More than 400 years ago, monks founded the first brewery here, near the border with Poland. After World War II, the family business was nationalized. With the end of communist East Germany, the Neuzelle Klosterbrauerei was threatened with closure. Helmut Fritsche was ready to invest in the company. But the manager from capitalist West Germany first had to win the trust of the Eastern German employees. Of course, there were reservations, even for someone from the West. We were the ones taking over, and a lot of people had to come to terms with that. There were doubts and skepticism, but at some point the skepticism dissolved. Fritsche grew up in East Germany himself. After school, he escaped to the West. But when he returned, his knowledge of the market economy and marketing was not enough by itself. He also needed the help of his Eastern German staff. I found something among my workers here that you probably won't find in Western Germany. A willingness to improvise, to do what was possible in what was a pretty run-down company. Fritsche took over a decrepit remnant of the communist planned economy. Despite its rich tradition, the brewery was close to collapse. After years as a state-run company in eastern Germany, relatively little had been done. But that was actually positive. Year for year, new things emerged. It was like the birth of a child. A child with a colorful history. Fritsche made the company's tradition part of the marketing concept. The historical malt mill is still in operation. It's a symbol of traditional beer production. Today, the Klosterbrauerei sells 30 brands of beer all over the world. It's drunk in the U.S., Russia, and China. I would describe it as an inter-German success story that could set an example for other medium-sized companies. A globally successful provincial beer, thanks to Western German know-how and Eastern German motivation.